and welcome to the mom game party people we are back for episode eight i am emily jones you are i'm julie dobbs still here still here still in our houses (laughs) Isn't it amazing? So we're on like month two of (sighs) safer at home. Um, Let's first of all, you're safer at really at home because you're home home right now. You're not. I am. Yeah. So fill me in. You kind of alluded to it last week. What's going down with the job sitch? Well, the job sitch. um, So I'm not supposed to use the term. But it mm-hmm. rhymes with Merlot. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I, and um, a lot it. of people are dealing with this situation right now. I'm not the only one. So it's not a sob story, woe is me kind of thing by any stretch. A lot of people are dealing with it. But I was kind of seems like the lucky chosen one from my place of employment. So it's going to be about three months-ish unless something changes that I am not working and I'm not on the air. Um, I hope to be right back there once this is over and hopefully this helps them get their S together. Like we're all trying to get our S together Mm -hmm. and they can get that ad ad revenue starting to come back in and then I'll be right back there. So I've only had two days of this not working and there's like two different emotions. One, it feels really weird to listen to them on the radio and to not be there and to not just know like, I'm going back tomorrow. I took a day off because of X, Y, Z. And also, oh my God, are these the longest days of my life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just in case we have any new listeners slash watchers, you are on a DFW radio station, sports radio station called The Ticket. And so... Yeah. Um, and you've become quite the fixture over there. Been there, what, now three years? Just two. Two years. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But I know that I've already seen a lot on social media, people missing you. I know it's strange not hearing your voice when I'm listening on my fancy AirPods. Um, yeah. It's different. So you you are missed. So I'm glad at least you have yeah. this outlet to where right. we can keep everyone, all your your loyal loyal fan base. Well, um, thank God. The loop, thank God the for the mom Twitter. game right now. Thank God for the mom. And, right and it's a silver lining for me. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going all in on the mom game. Let's make it bigger and better and let's have fun with it. It'll, it'll be my outlet that, that I need. And hopefully people who are missing my voice on the ticket, if that's anybody, I don't know, that they can find us here on the mom game and uh, relate to everything that that we're going through. But yeah, I know a lot of people are out of work right now, you know, and whether they're um, (laughs) (laughs) Merlot or or, I'm I'm having white wine today. Cheers. I don't have Merlot in here, but I should. Wine in a can. It should be my drink of, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, my drink of quarantine. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are dealing with it. So it's just it's just crappy times, but hopefully everybody's hanging in there and hopefully you know, we have these like phase 1 of trying to get the get employment back, get the economy back. So I'm hoping that we're as a city shifting in that general direction and we can at least have a few things start to opening back up and businesses won't have to completely close altogether. Um but yeah, it's 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 crappy. I didn't really see it coming at all. Some other people there are getting um, a three week Merlot intermittent, like one week at a time. Yeah, um, kind of just spaced out, you know, throughout the same stretch of time that I'll be out. But I'm holding I'm holding down the fort for the long haul for the long one. So you got the long one. Well, Jules, yeah. I'm sorry it stinks. Yeah. Um, hopefully this can fill a little bit of a void for you. So it will, it will. And, and I was telling someone else, I was like, I started that job when Anna was five weeks old. Like I, the opening was there and I applied and I got it and wasn't really expecting to just start a full-time job. And I hadn't like been home with her since she was five weeks old. So for me, I'm trying to use that as another silver lining and just say, okay, I'm going to be home with my kids. It's like my two year late maternity leave that I never really had, you know, and then hopefully I'll, I'll go right back to work. So just wanted to say that as well. It's not all bad. Glass half full. I like it, Joel. I'm trying. Okay. I'm almost so half full. We, we need to fill it up. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so we were talking, you and I, about, you know, different show ideas that we had. And before any of this happened, one of them was like, let's get down to the nitty gritty on like self-care, like yes. Botox and facials. And so I did something interesting over the weekend. Yes, I need to hear about this. I um, I decided to apply my own, do an at-home chemical peel. Okay, how does this even start? Okay, so one of my girlfriends in Austin, her name is Mandy, and she's like this big like lifestyle, fashion, beauty, oh, yes. Oh, yes. like with, with nothing that I like, <laughs> none of which are my forte. Uh, I mean, I was raised by a man. And so I didn't really like, I washed my face with like Noxzema until I was like right. 20. Yeah. Um, hey, so did I she just, know what I, it means to back cleanup? Exactly. No, probably not. <laughs> but it's just um, that has never been, you know, the fashion beauty niche right. has never been my no. thing. But yeah, I kind of got forced into a little bit of it when you're on television, especially when you're a woman in sports on television. That's like your shelf life with each one of those things <laughs> goes down. And so, and plus, <laughs> I'm just, I want to take care of myself. Of I, I mean, if, if, let's be real. If I have the choice between looking good or looking bad, I would prefer to look as good as I can. Yeah. So as I got older, I um, just started doing a little more. And so I, I want to tell a story in a minute, but first let's, let's dive into the chemical peel. Okay. So okay. anyway, my it friend made I, I feel like it looks pretty she, good. She, well, okay. So here, well, let me tell you. Okay. So she, okay. Ha she had done this and sh she has flawless skin already. She looks like mm -hmm. a porcelain doll and she's like 45. It's kind of nauseating, honestly. And so I thought, well, I mean, th th it was a thing where you could get, it's called a VI peel and you could get it shipped to your house. And I was like, and fine, I have nothing else to do. Might as well try it. And so I got the, the package and then the girl who sent it to me was to, did a FaceTime and she did the whole tutorial about how to do it and what to do and all that kind of stuff. And I wasn't ready to do it at that time. Cause we were shooting, I was shooting some shows for Fox sports Southwest. So I decided on Saturday after I got done shooting shows, okay, this is a good time to do it. I won't have to be in front of the camera again until I'm on with Julie on the mom game. Mm -hmm. And so I did it on Saturday <laughs> and you know, and you kind of just follow the instructions and you put this like liquidy stuff on your face and it, it looks like iodine oh, God. and it feels like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it feels like someone just dropped you into a frying pan. Like, it, oh, it's, no. I mean, it's, it hurts? Like, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not pleasant. Yeah. Um, and the smell is gross. Um, you were so bright. It was pretty, I mean, it was, Listen, I'm exaggerating a little bit. It wasn't that bad, but like a, some of it like dripped into my mouth. Just to do it at like, home. Like, what if something you know? goes wrong and you're at home? I don't know. And you I can't don't go know. to the doctor right now because they don't have time for you and your failed chemical peel. Right? <laughs> Can you imagine? And get that end my career on an at home chemical peel. Uh, so, anyway, I just thought, why not? I mean, I'd seen my friend Mandy do it, and so I thought, why not? So, I get okay. through the process. I come out of the bathroom, and my, my husband is like, whoa, so. What, what happened there? And I was like, I mean, I gave myself a chemical peel. It was like, was that the best idea? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> so he didn't see it in the, in the process. He saw it after. No, after. And I was bright red. And you do oh it on your gosh. chest too. And oh so it's like, God. I was just like, yeah. How long so did it, it take? Like really How long bad. does it sit there? So you do like one application, wait three minutes, two application, wait three minutes, three, and you're done. It's, okay. It takes 10 minutes. It's not and long. could you like, did you order uh, this online or something? Well, so I got it from a girl on Instagram. So okay. From a girl on Instagram. Gotcha. So she seems legit. Like I said, my friend. She sounds. It. She um, sounds legit. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> She's got an Instagram page. Um, so, so then the next day is fine. Not really anything. Uh, so I did on a Saturday. Really nothing on Sunday. And then Monday, um, <laughs> it was like giant flakes of skin. And she specifically tells you, do not peel it. She's like, you can cut it with those little like scissors, you know, those tiny little scissors, you can cut it, but do not pull on it. Don't peel it. And so I was trying to listen to her. So I'm walking around the house and my kids are like, what, what's, I mean, you've got flit stuff right. is falling all over your face. Their moms so they are were completely, <laughs> completely repulsed. Um, and then by Tuesday today, most of it comes off in the shower and I, I, I mean, I feel like it looks decent today. There's still some, if you can see, there's still some, a little bit of peeling, like 
underneath here and stuff. But yeah, I think I'm going to like it. It I looks mean, really good. Your skin's yeah. always looked really good, though. Like, I don't know that yeah. I'd really be able to tell a huge difference, but I think it looks really good. Well, I like it. I mean, unless it's something to talk about, right? It's a good comedy. It's something to do. Friends. Yeah. yeah I, can send my, I send my, I'm like, I've sent texts to, you know, gruesome, flaky skin, gross pictures to my friends to make them laugh. Yeah. Did you do yeah, a so lot of peels, fine. like, prior at an actual place of some sort? I would. So after the baseball season's over, because I'm in the sun so much, I would go get kind of like a whole treatment plan, which is like she would do like a microderm abrasion, a chemical peel to wear to kind of get that whole layer of nastiness off yeah. um, just from being in the sun so much. So that's one of the things that I do self-care wise. And then I also do Botox, which okay. I started probably about seven or eight years ago. And this is a funny story. So our mutual friend, Sarah Melton, Mm -hmm. um, I was at an engagement party for her and I will never forget her <laughs> friend. I think her name was Tori came up and she was like, Oh, I can help you. I can oh, no. help you. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? What, like, Hi, I'm uh, what do you mean you can help me? Yeah. She's like, yeah, she's like, that's what I do for a living. I, she's like, both, both. She was like, weird. Spout, no, no. Like when off she, numbers of what she would do. Right. Like when she looks at people, she's just seeing like X's oh. and dots and like, oh, I could do this. I could do that. And then probably a few drinks in, she's like, <laughs> she just can't help herself. Yeah, I can help you with that. I was like, oh, oh, really? So mm -hmm. I, um, I never even noticed. I really didn't notice how terrible yeah. my, how deep my lines were on my forehead. So do you just do it on oh. your forehead? Yeah. So I do it here and here in between okay. that. Yeah. The eye. So yeah. I was super scared of it in the beginning. I was scared it was going to hurt. And then I, just, I don't know why I was like, Oh, here's some botulism. It's a needle in your head. face. Yeah. Right. And so, <laughs> but then after I saw what a difference it made, I was like, Oh, this is a risk I am definitely willing to take. <laughs> like, oh yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So you haven't done it yet. Have you? Or no, you I did. I, um, so I did it once, like probably two summers ago because one of my girlfriends um that lives in austin is a botox nurse and so right. all of my friends in austin get it done from her so i was like well i want to try this and she gave me a really good deal and then i never did it again because i don't live in austin and it was hard to like maintain it but um recently i went to my med spa in plano which is somewhere i think we're hoping to do some work with here on the mom game and and nicole oh, from my you. med spa is awesome she can hopefully come on or one of her um cosmetologists and they can answer all of our questions that we have but i went in there because they have a relationship with the dallas stars um and so i knew about her and i went in there i guess it's been a month and a half or so and i did it again so i did it again and i felt like i loved it like i got a little bit more than i did the first time mm -hmm. and they did it in like this right here and right here and um i loved it so i wouldn't i want to keep doing it with them as soon as they open back up but i can see where it's like kind of addicting yeah so that i haven't done anything time. else though you haven't no okay because i don't know it's oh it, it's overwhelming to right? me and so it's like other, obviously expensive it's yeah it's not cheap um yeah. but i feel like i'm just it's i'm to a point where i'm like it's i'm willing well, I'm of definitely course willing yeah i'll get there um yeah so botox and then i do the chemical peels and stuff like that the chemical peel microderm abrasion um and then i just i started before all this went down laser treatment Ooh. to remove hair under my arms and my Ooh. bikini area oh nice so How oh my god <laughs> it is the most painful oh no thing ever oh, so no. the underarm's fine no problem it. yeah it's i'm telling it man i'm starting to sweat thinking about it oh god it is, Wait, it, i'm sweating it, thinking about it well well i mean just think about that area is yeah. tends to be on the sensitive side <laughs> and then it's just so awkward you're just like laying there on a table, you know, you've still got your shoes on because there's no need to take those off. And then I probably need to take my shoes off just because it's awkward if your shoes are on. I probably so. I, I, I would. I, I, I didn't. I, I know. But I think Maybe that's just me. No, I think that's just me. Um, yeah. So if you're, if, you're if you're listening or watching, let us know. While you're getting your bikini area lasered, do you A, keep your shoes on like me or B, <laughs> Take your shoes off like Julie. And socks. This is a great. Yes, and socks. 
So, I mean, it's a very awkward experience. Like, have you ever done a spray tan? Like where you're, yeah, you just yeah. get totally nuts. But I've never had, I've never had a person do it. I've only You've never had a per No, okay, that weirds, see, it weirds person. me out. I know. I've just got no shame at this point, Julie. Like, <laughs> whatever. Like, here yeah. it is. Yeah. And no, I just do the machine it. where you do like the robot yeah. move. And you're like yeah. this and you're like this. And I always screw yeah. it up one way or another. Or I put the hairnet like too low. So then I have a big like spot, white yeah. spot right here. I'm not good at it. I should have a person. Yeah, the per it does make such a difference when it's the person. Like they're just so much better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the spray tan by the person. So then you you know you've lost all your shame there for that girl. And then right. the, the the one who does the laser, it's just like I mean, yeah. it's up there with like an OB gen. Like you're just like oh here we and are. To them, it's nothing. You know, not like we feel weird, but we probably don't need to feel weird because it's not. Like I always want to be. I know, but it's so awkward. And then they're like trying to talk to you to make you feel better and get your mind off the fact that you're getting freaking laser done on your the most sensitive area of your body and it's just like the ob gen does like yes. like i'm just gonna put my finger here but how was your day like how are your kids <laughs> how's, oh. how's kindergarten going for your little one I'm like, <laughs> let's oh just not God. let's just not like it's i'm gonna just, close my eyes and tell me when oh, this is over God. yeah I know those poor people that have to try to make up that small talk. And she's gotten to the point. It's kind of the point now where like, I can't, I have a hard time controlling my mouth. Like I can't, <laughs> I'll, I will like audibly sc like scream or yell and I don't need to. And I know that it's probably scaring the people. Like, if so you're like screaming in like, vain. We're out. <laughs> but I know. And I, and she's talking to me like in baby voice. She'll be like, so, and yet, you know, and you're like, and I'm like, oh my God, this is so, yeah. Oh my God, I have my visual of you just like wailing while some chick's trying to make small talk. <laughs> right. While she zaps me with a very powerful laser on a very oh. sensitive spot. I will say though, so I, you do six treatments. I did, I've done four so far. Um, and now I'm off the schedule cause we can't go in, right. but it's like, it's made a huge difference. Like, yeah. it's, cause that's such a pain if you're a woman and if you're a dude yeah. listening, sorry for the story, but now you understand what women are going through. Shaving during base, during baseball season, shaving during bikini season or summer. It's one of the biggest beat downs ever. Yeah, it really is. Like, I mean, on a, you know, relatively speaking, but it's, it's not fun. So I was really looking forward to completing my whole treatment schedule and being right. ready to go by summertime. And now it doesn't look like it's I know. Happen. Like if they it's could redo happen. humans, like I wish they would uh, make them without hair there. Seriously. Right. I mean, or just a little God, bit. Maybe. Are you there? It's me. <laughs> <Julie>. <laughs> um, just one simple request. Oh, my job and no hair there. There you go. There you go. Um, seems that seems very doable for a man with so much power. Right. Um, okay, okay. So what um before we move on because i i do want to talk about you know what moms power do yeah we got a power ring up five doors. but um <clears throat> do you have any baseball updates i was hearing something today about texas maybe being a destination where people could play yeah. and i know a lot of people probably listen knowing you from baseball and might be interested in this do you have anything or like how are you what's that line of communication like for you how are you getting your information so i'll um you know text well, we have calls every once in a while with john daniels our general manager chris woodward our manager and so they they kind of fill us in on you know kind of the basics of what's going on but nothing really earth shattering comes out of those mm -hmm. um calls and so basically what where you're getting information on like the long-term plan and the big picture plan those things are coming from you know national writers that are in communication with people at major league baseball right and mm -hmm. so that you know the latest thing that was thrown out was like a three pod system to where there would be like three leagues, 10 teams in each league. And based on your geographical location, that's where you would go. And um, leagues. that makes my it, brain hurt. It, all of it makes me. That hurt. seems so wrong to have three leagues. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, and at this point, it's like they they've said, and John Daniels has said it a million times. I mean, at this point, they're looking at every there. It's just a giant right. brainstorming. Right. They're, they're, you know, they're seeing how logistically how it would work. But then it's just such a complicated issue because you think about, you know, OK, let's say we've come up with this plan. We're going to play a three month season. We're going to play double headers almost, you know, 
a, a lot of days, whatever we can, you know, maybe do a shortened season, whatever. And then th these 10 teams are going to go here, these 10 here and these 10 here. And then you've got, you know, players that are like Mike Trout and Clayton Kershaw and big name, big money players that like Mike Trout's wife is pregnant with their first yeah, child. Like, like, no thanks. You know, the, the big money guys are like you know, weighing everything. Is it worth it to be away from my family for, you know, three months or just not get paid for this season or whatever, or get paid right. less or whatever. But there's so many players that aren't in that upper echelon that right. aren't going to play that, need that, that money not, that need that truly need it. And so there's a there's a, a, a thinking that those those that it, it would end up passing because those guys would, you mm -hmm. know, outnumber the the ones that, you know, that can afford to go without. Right. Um, and that too, that those guys at the top might be like, you know, well, we need to do the right thing in this situation for the for the good of the, the game and for guys. you know for for the other guys. Mm -hmm. But then you're talking about, you know, at that point, you know, you're still talking about getting anywhere from, you know, seven thousand people dispersed to these sites, and then right. how do you do the test? It just seems like a, it makes my head hurt thinking about what a logistical nightmare would be. <laughs> yeah. So, no but because of the facilities that we have in a close proximity, I mean, you have um globe life field obviously with the roof you wouldn't have to worry about delays or anything like that and then you know three and a half hours you've got the astro uh, the astrodome you've got minute made and um they've got you know the same situation with the dome stadium um and then if you could if you had to you could utilize you know tcu's baseball field mm -hmm. um you could and like the Dell diamond, you know, and, austin, diamond yeah. and austin diamond and austin round rock <clears throat> um um uh, they could make it work. Frisco, Dr. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of options here, which is why I think it's being considered and it's centrally located. So again, you it's know, like, we've heard these yeah. theories get thrown out and then, you know, they kind of don't, don't come to fruition, but I, that's, you know, that's the latest one that's being thrown out. There. Yeah. It sounds like they're, like you said, they're the big minds are all having this brainstorm session and then something leaks out and then it's like goes down the chain to the media and then all of a sudden yeah. we hear about it but it's like it was probably just people spitballing like and then there's people like me that are like in this ticket ticker like texas right. could be getting baseball because we are just grasping for whatever kind of news so sure. that's interesting i was just wondering what you had heard about all of that but it sounds like along with the rest of the world like nobody knows no nobody, nobody knows. knows um nobody knows. so one thing we know <clears throat> as moms and as somebody who runs a household with kids and husband and people that have been quarantined in their house all the time. There's a lot of shit to do in our mm -hmm. house, Emily. And I'm feeling a little like overwhelmed with it all. I mean, I've always been, I've, this is what I was saying to someone the other day. It's like, I have fought the, like the just like mom robot clean thing my whole, I mean, it's what writers almost five. So only five years. And I, I try to like, just take time to do this or do that or like relax. But I feel like there's a point where every mom becomes that robot. And like mm -hmm. every mom is just like, I've got to use all my spare time that I have to clean and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I've got to like <laughs> go through these knickknacks. And then, and then it becomes like a mom competition of like, who's got the cleanest house. Mm -hmm. You know, like it doesn't matter what else you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're like traveling around covering baseball or working, you know, six hours a day in an office or whatever. Is your house clean? Like, like, is there dust? <laughs> and right. it's like, it stresses me out. And I know you are so good at this, but you have definitely like morphed into the, the robot cleaner and I'm jealous. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been fighting it and, and I need to just like, let it happen. I'm almost there. But it just made me think like, OK, I need to talk to Emily about this because she's figured it out. I'm behind you on the on the trail to becoming the robot mom cleaner. And um, I want to know how you handle all of this and then thought we could power rank our chores, too, while we're at it. OK, I love the idea. So first of all, my my biggest suggestion to everyone is to, to start by like cleaning out. And it's I, Marie Kondo is a thing. I, yeah. I've never read her book or whatever. I've heard of I, I guess it's like, you know, basically yeah. just clean out your life, which things I, that. Don't if it bring doesn't you bring joy. you joy, yeah, right. Or my and my whole deal is not, not necessarily does it bring you joy, but have you used it in the last year? So if you haven't used it in the last year, if you haven't worn it in the last year, you sh I just feel like you should throw it out. So this is what I've told like I've told my, my sister to do this or whatever. Like go room by room. So have mm -hmm. one day and it's one room. 
Mm -hmm. and save the kitchen for the last or the first because it's the most overwhelming. So you want to get that out of the way first, I'd get that out of the way. And then you you know that the hardest part is done. I feel like the kitchen, there's so many cabinets and there's so many oh, junk drawers and all that kind of ending. stuff. It's never ending. So either do it first or do it last because then okay. by the time you get to the end, you'll be like, oh, I only have one more room. I've got to do this because I'm so close. Right. So I would just go room by room and literally okay. everything in that in that room and like I make Henry and Hattie do it, like we probably do it like once a year. Like we literally go through every drawer, every cabinet, every shelf, everything, and then wow. we dump. And so we did it um, right before lockdown, or not lockdown, but safe at home started. Yeah. We did it on a Sunday and we did it and because because we do it often, we did it from like sun up to sundown. And I think it was like, it ended up being like 10 hours of work and got rid of like, oh my God, probably 12 trash bags full of stuff plus whatever else. And we're, we're not, I mean, like I'm, I'm a, I'm not a keeper. I'm not a hoarder. So yeah, for us to get rid of that much stuff felt so good. And then my other, so I, if once you, and then once you get that done, you feel like, okay, now I have my slate. My slate is clean. I have my this clean canvas to work with. And then now what I do literally is I will not go to bed unless everything is picked up. The dishes are in the dishwasher, the laundry is in the laundry room, the, you know, the kids, Cl clothes and toys yeah. and like everything is put back because once you find a place for everything, it brings you like this really cool feeling of like, wow, my shit's in order. And yeah, so I don't know what that is. Don't so, know it, but once you get it, you like don't want to let it go. Yeah. And so that's what I do is I make sure my shit's in order every night before I go to bed. And no matter like what time it is or how tired no you might be. Time. So I told you there's this, a show you want to watch. Right. So I've told you this when I come home, when I'm working baseball and I get home at like 1130 <laughs> or midnight, I will do a, I call it my sweep. I do the yeah. sweep through the house to make sure that everybody's put their stuff back yeah. where it goes. Because I, that, and the whole thing is too, I want to wake up knowing that I have a clean slate to work with. Yeah. So that, that way I know when I wake up, I'm not already behind because I've got to do all the stuff I should have done last night. And then I've got to play catch up and then stuff falls through the cracks. Also, I have severe OCD. And so right. this is just, Part, so it's part of it. It's part of like what makes me, you know, sleep good. It makes me relax. Take, yeah. I yeah. Mean, I know I'm so effed up, but no, you're not. I get that too, good. because I know like when you get home from covering an event on TV, I know I used to have like a rush of adrenaline. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that's what you have yes. and you come home and you've still got it flowing and you've been watching live sports and you've been on TV and you're like, okay, what can I do? So that's a good way to, to do it. Kelly kind of has that. Well, <laughs> Kelly comes home from, from his sporting events. He doesn't clean the whole house, but he's like, I can't go to sleep. Like I've got to sit right. here and like, like just wind down. And I was like yeah. that after covering stars games too. So when I went to find um, a new location to shoot, because you're giving me so much shit for my upstairs location at my house, <laughs> which was well, well deserved. I found this little corner and I like, I want to ask you if you think I need these things that I had to move out of the way. Okay. Okay. Um, a cupcake. Nope. Nope. Um, definitely not. Batman, like oh, that? I don't know. Right, I like that a, a Christmas tree cookie cutter. <laughs> that should be put with the Christmas decorations, Jules. What else do we have? Is this candle ugly? Do I do I need it? <laughs> no, you don't. What does it smell like? It's like it's oh oh. There's a hockey ball. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of anxiety doing this. Oh, okay. It smells like coconut. Okay. Well, so that was my exercise. So Batman mask is the only thing that's allowed to stay. Okay. Uh, that is hilarious. And you know what helps is if you have someone there with you to like tell you like, no, you don't need that. No, you don't need that. No, you don't need that. Well, and then um, you can make, like, make it a little, like make it fun if you have someone to talk yeah. to. Well, that's and I do with my mom. Yes, you do. Everybody needs their mom. Well, and also too, what I do is with the kids, like I'm before every birthday, before every Christmas, they have to clean out their stuff and they have to get, and I always give them a number and I'll be like, you got to bring me, you know, 10 toys, 15 toys to get rid of. Yeah. Same yeah. way with clothes, like right before we go school shopping or, you know, we change for this and I'll be like, you need to bring me, you know, 10 shirts, three shorts, all your underwear. We need to replace them, whatever. Yeah. Um, Speaking of replacing underwear, no, no, yeah. I'm Ooh, sorry. Yeah. Poor it's Henry. Okay. It's just so a he, I know, but he just he bless his heart. He he his he hides underwear if he has like you know not an accident, but like like a poop stain. Know. 
little skin, skin mark, mark or something. <laughs> yeah. And he won't, I'm like, dude, just bring him to me. I'll spray and wash. Yes. Today I found a pair like behind <laughs> a night site, like his bedside table, like tucked oh behind him. I was like, oh, honey, poor you thing. Gotta, I know. Bless his heart. He's I, embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I know. But I was like, honey, we all have had skip marks. Trust me. <laughs> Everybody's been there. It's something you uh, work through as you get older. You do. Well, I'll get through it. Yeah. And oh, then you get old and you guy, you just put yeah. them in the trash can or something. I know. Yeah. Just put it. That's what I mean. Like, just sneak it down and put it in the garbage. Like, you don't leave those little it. Easter eggs everywhere as you're cleaning. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's my advice for how to organize your life. Okay. So thank I you. That, yeah. Do one, do one room, maybe even the easiest room. See how it makes you feel. Like, yeah, or, or room I know it'll like, feel good. Have a lot of stuff. It, 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 oh my god, it feels so good. That's the thing. And, like, I'm not in denial. I know it, and I yeah. I want to be like this. I but it's this, like it's like finding that like this six, is the time six to eight hours. Yes, this is the time. I have this no excuses. Yeah, no excuses at all. Okay, let's uh, let's power rank the chores. I'm gonna let you go first because I gotta look at my list and okay. see if I'm and you can you can get an idea of the chores exactly. that we're discussing. But um, okay, so on the ticket, we power rank things and it's a lot of fun. So as I was going through doing all these dang chores the other day, I was thinking, oh, I like this one. Oh, I hate this one. And there's the ones that you just dread, like you just put them off, put them off, put them off until you have to. Right. And then there's the ones that you're okay with. So I thought we'd power rank. So my number five, and this is out of five. So my least favorite is what we just okay. talked through, organizing slash going through shit. That's on my list as number five. So hopefully you helped me with that. Number four, just above that, is laundry. In laundry, it's inevitable. You have to do it. My neighbor's funny. She's like, I do my laundry like I breathe now. She's like, I hit a point where you just do it and you don't even think about it, but I'm not there yet. And I hate it because it can drag on. Like it, It's a commitment. Like once you put that laundry in, you know it's gonna, you're going to be tied to that shit for the next like five hours. And it's hard to commit to doing the laundry. So I put that as number four. Number three, just above laundry, and these two were close, is dishes. I don't mind putting them in the dishwasher and cleaning them and putting them that's in the dishwasher. Not, that's not doing the dishes. It you is. All the way through. You got to go it all the way through true. to completion. Because my husband right. like, I did the dishes. I'm like, you put them in the washing exactly. machine. Exactly. He's you like. got to through. Yes. Okay. Right. Because putting them in is like, oh, this is fine. This is easy. I'm putting them, This my dishwasher friend's going to take care of it from here. And then they just like sit there and you go to like do something and all of a sudden you open it up and it's like, no, <laughs> I've got to upload the dishwasher. I have a full one as we speak right now. Um, number two, sweeping. I kind of like sweeping. Sweeping nice. is fun. Sweeping is like, you know, it just, you feel like you're accomplishing something. You get that little pile and See the pile. Yep. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I have this thought every time I sweep. I'm like, I can't believe I was living in this house with this pile like spread throughout this right. room before I swept. And I had no idea that this pile of crap was like congregating. And it's an easy, like, you don't have to commit for a long time, two to three to five minutes, and you can sweep the shit out of something. Yep. Number one, vacuuming. I okay. really like vacuuming. We don't have a ton of carpet. We have carpet. We have like a, a rug on the in the main room where we always are. And that gets so much traction from the kids and snacks. And we eat most of our meals in there. Um, but I like I like the noise it makes. <laughs> like when you know you have stuff, when you know you've gotten something good. <laughs> you scored. You scored. <laughs> You're like, I'm doing something here. I hear the noises. And then you have the like the lines. Like, uh, so everybody knows when evidence. they walk in. Yes, proof. the evidence, the proof, like people walk in and they're like, oh, she vacuumed today. Now that's the difference between vacuuming and sweeping because when you sweep, nobody knows. Yeah, you can sweep no your vacuum. head off and like, no one's going to walk in and be like, wow, you swept. But when you vacuum, somebody's going to walk in and be like, oh, she's got her shit together. And like, she made a design. <laughs> Yes, design. <laughs> like a fancy, like they do in the outfield at ballparks. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's so back in. That's we my have, top one. We have similar lists, actually, and for similar. So my worst is ironing. I can't even remember oh. the last time I ironed. I'll get like a brand new dress or something and I'll send it to the dry cleaners to get pressed because I'm like, I am, there's mm. zero chance I'm ironing. I will not iron. I think the only time I've ironed, only time I ever iron is when I'm in a hotel and I have no choice because I my stuff's wrinkled. And yeah. I, I 
Yeah, it's hard to make a mistake too, or it's oh. easy to make a mistake and then like leave yeah. that like that moisture yeah. dot. Yeah. yeah. Um, number four, laundry, and I it's it's just because I do, I do, I think I told you this, I do a little laundry every day. I do it every day, like it's just yeah. part of my day, and mm. I feel good when it's over. But I bitch the entire time I'm doing it. <laughs> um, Dishwashing is okay to me. I don't, there is something nice about getting everything in the dishwasher and then cleaning off the cabinets and spraying them down and all that kind of stuff. A little bit of satisfaction mm -hmm. cleaning that up. Do you like wait for it to finish? Like, do you, I know it takes like an hour or something. Are you like kind of thinking the whole time I got to wait for these dishes to finish and then no. unload it immediately? Nope, no, nope. that's okay. one thing I'll let go. So I'll let that go to the morning if I okay. Ooh, letting it go. Like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, sweeping is number two, just like uh -huh. you. I'm like, wow, I, you know, you feel like you've accomplished something. You got this big old mound of dirt and dog hair and yeah. you know, picked it up. You're like, that's what I did today. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> um, and then number one, and I just was reacquainted with this chore and I did it over the weekend and it's pressure washing. Ooh. I pressure washed our driveway mm -hmm. and I have never felt, it was so therapeutic. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> this pressure, what, okay, pressure washing the driveway. So I loved it, therapeutic. But let me tell you why I was pressure washing my driveway. Why? So pr pr this is where our, this episode is running way long, but Ted can cut it <laughs> if he wants to. So Mike decide. Mike has had a project every weekend, like a project. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I kind of just want to chill on the weekends. Like, can we just not? So he has this project to do that ep epoxy on the garage floor. Have you ever seen this epoxy stuff you put on the garage floor? Oh, mix is it like speckles in it and all that kind of stuff? Is. I so love so that stuff. I yeah, feel like I'll never I live in a world where my garage has that. Yeah. Well, it costs like a couple grand to get it done by professionals. <laughs> That's why I'll never it's live that. in a world. <laughs> yeah. DIY over here. We got nothing but time. Let's just do this ourselves. Oh, but I, I love that stuff. Specifically, I was like, Friday is my personal day of freedom. I will do no chore, like we, personal day of freedom. Well, he goes ahead. I'll, oh, that's fine. I got it. I'll just knock it out. Gets everything out of the garage, sprays down the acid to clean off, get the surface clean, blah, blah, Gets, starts. And he's like, oh, can I just get, just get you to do one thing? Just one thing just around the I said no. So because he knows if he starts and I, it, it's not good, my OCD will go crazy and I'll end up helping him. I mean, he's a smart man. He knows what he's doing. Right. So I get sucked into this. So we get halfway done with our epoxy garage. Epoxy, <laughs> you call it. We've got two of those rollers and we're just rolling the whatever, you know what, out of it. And both both brushes on the roller deteriorate. Oh, no. We literally have nothing. The epoxy's drying. So then we end up having to get like paint brushes. It, it, we're getting epoxy everywhere. It's not supposed to be. I am literally so livid. I can't even, I mean, I'm so annoyed. Oh no. So annoyed. You're like, this is why you hire somebody. Yeah. Seriously. But anyway, we made it work. I'm like, okay, we made it work. It doesn't look terrible. It's fine. We didn't do the flakes because I was like, that sounds like a disaster. Like the shiny. The, we just did the straight up gray. So there's no okay. like those pretty flaky things. Yeah. And so then, so I'm like, but meanwhile, the driveway is full of just like, it just looks ridiculous. So I, reached out to my little neighborhood mom's page. I'm like, anybody have a good person who could come pressure wash? So I pay a hundred bucks for some guy to come deep clean our driveway, get all the stuff off. And then, so I'm like, okay, clean, done, done with that project. So then last weekend, he's like, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna pull all that monkey grass up out of the flower beds by the driveway. It looks terrible, the kids play basketball. They, And I'm like, really? So you're going to pull out all that monkey grass, put it all on my driveway. And then now I'm going to have a shit driveway because it, it was demolished. So that oh, no. driveway I had, and he's trying to spray it off with a regular garden hose and it's not doing anything. And I, oh, was no. like, so then I got pissed off and I went and got a pressure washer from one of our friends. <laughs> of course you I did. Came home and I angry power wash. Oh, I bet it felt good. But by the time I was done, I felt like I had just had a therapy session. Wow. So, and you put it at number one on your rankings. You loved it that much. All's well that ends well. I need to pressure wash. Pressure washing. Yep. Yeah. No more, we, no more projects. So I'm like, we're no, we're done with the projects. We're done. Well, that's a big one. So that's impressive. Good yeah. for y'all. I've yep. always been jealous of those garages. Oh, well, I don't know if there would be much <laughs> jealousy here, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's awesome. Okay. All right. Well, next week, I don't know what the hell we're going to talk about, but we'll, we'll figure it out between now. We'll and figure it out. Yep. Oh, there's yeah, so much to talk about.
Yeah, self-care. And of course, one other thing I forgot to mention is the teeth whitening. They're looking good, especially yeah. with that chemical peel. Yeah, we yeah, we talked self-care on this episode, talked the chemical peel, and then I forgot to mention I get my teeth whitened now. Um, thanks to our friends at Cowden Cosmetic Dentistry, which just happens to be who today's episode is brought to you by. Mm -hmm. So while awesome. elective dental procedures are prohibited at this time, Dr. Anna Cowden and her staff want you to know that they are equipped and ready to handle any dental emergency that you might have. Any emergency procedure you may need will be done with your safety and the safety of the staff as the primary concern. If you need help determining what is elective and what's an emergency procedure, call Cowden Cosmetic Dentistry today at 972-380-6223. Or you can email them at info at Cowden Cosmetic, Cosmetic Dentistry.com. So thanks to, to get Dr. Cowden for my bright, shiny white teeth. Yes, yeah. I'll be heading there soon, as soon as I can. I know, we're gonna go through all the things and the pedicures and the manicures. Oh. My toes need so all much help. So much um, help. Okay. Well, we appreciate you guys hanging with us. If you made it this far, God bless you. As we <laughs> say at the end of every show, we really do want to build a community. So hit us up on Twitter at the mom game one. Let us know what you think about the show. Let us know maybe some guests you would like to hear from. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, don't forget, let us know if you would keep your shoes on while getting mm -hmm. laser treatment on your bikini area, or if you would, Take them off. Shoes let on or shoes off. And we then you can let us know your power rankings too. If there's something that when you were listening, you're like, oh my God, I got to tell them about this. Or maybe she needs to know this trick about doing dishes, you know, whatever. Let us hear about your chores. And your about. Yes. Unfortunately, right. that's part of being a mom. Later, taters. Cheers. Julie. Later. Cheers. 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 Mom game out. Mom, mom game, game out. out. Bye, Em. The Mom Game is a production of Vocal. For more information and more programming, please visit VocalNow.com. That's V-O-K-A-L-Now.com. Mm -hmm.